blessings to everybody. Hey, listen, go ahead and uh, invite your followers. Uh, for those of you that are coming in, I want you to go ahead and invite your followers. God has a word for you today. Blessings to everybody. Blessings to everybody. In Lottie Dottie, go ahead and invite your followers. Share and invite. Come on, share and invite very, very quickly. Share and invite the Lord. Uh, indeed, has a word for you on today. I want you to share and invite. Go ahead. Blessings to everybody. Thank God for you. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Good night. All depending on uh, what time zone uh, of the world that you are tapping uh, in in from. Hopefully you're having a wonderful, 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 wonderful beginning uh, of the weekend. This is Saturday for many of us. Uh, and hopefully you're having a, uh, a blessed weekend. Go ahead and uh, invite your followers. Uh, I'm going to give it. Give it a couple of minutes uh, so that you can uh, invite some people on. Listen, if you're here for the very first time, uh, do give me your name. I would love to know who you are uh, so I can shout you out. Um, I do thank God for, of course, all of my uh, committed and uh, consistent followers. Uh, thank God for you all on this morning. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. So, so, so appreciate your blessings. Blessings. Go ahead and invite some people on here. Come on, I'll give it a couple of minutes. I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes for you to uh, to get some uh, some people on here. Go ahead and invite some people on. There's something that I want to uh, to share with you. Something I heard in my spirit. This is going to be a season of supernatural uh, and uh, divine miracles supernatural and divine miracles um, go ahead and uh, let's invite some people on here for those of you that are here already Your blessings to you. Blessings to you. Go ahead and invite some followers for those of you that are here. Good morning. Uh, blessings to you, Rhonda. Good to see you. Good to see you. Any questions, please direct them to my email. I do not answer questions on Periscope. I uh, don't mean to be rude, but I'm not here to uh, to answer questions. All right, that's not my that's not my assignment. And once again, I don't mean to be rude. Uh, my assignment is not to answer questions over a periscope. You have any questions, uh, direct them to my website, www.prophetmitchell.org. And, uh, of course, when time gives me the opportunity to, uh, I will address those questions. But I do not, I do not entertain questions on periscope because it's not my assignment. That's not the reason why God has brought me here, all right? I'm here to prophesy to you, to minister to you, uh, to impart truth into you, to bring transformation to you, all right? Hey, Rhonda, blessings to you. Good to see you. So go ahead and, uh, and invite followers. Go ahead and invite followers. It's important to, to stay true to the assignment, all right? Blessings to you. I appreciate you. Thank you for understanding. I so, so, so appreciate you. Um, thank you for understanding. It's good to deal with spiritually matured people who understand, right? Thank you for understanding. I appreciate, I appreciate your spiritual maturity and understanding my assignment. Blessings to you. Um, so hopefully you're having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, great blessings from Michigan. Good to have you. Any first timers here today? Before I get into the word for today, any first timers here today? Any first timers here today? Before I get into the word of the Lord, you know it is so significantly imperative that you 
allow people to, to minister to you, to impart into you, who carry the genuine word of God, the genuine word of God, uh, because a word that has not come from God, uh, if it falls from any man's lips, if it comes out of any woman's mouth, a word that has not come from the Lord um, is not obligated to manifest anything. God says, it's my word uh, that will not return unto me void. It will not return empty. It will not return futile. Uh, that means every word that falls from the very lips of God, every word that comes out of the very mouth of God will indeed manifest what it says. God says, my word will not return unto me void. And uh, oftentimes, we have heard words from people that have not manifested, and that did return void because it was not the word of the Lord. So it's imperatively significant that when you allow people to pour into you, uh, you allow people to speak to you, you allow people to minister to you, it's a significantly imperative that you allow people to minister to you who have heard genuinely, who have genuinely heard uh, from from the voice of of the Lord, um, I was up earlier. Uh, I was up earlier, just just sort of like messing around. Um, wasn't doing anything focused. Uh, wasn't doing anything uh, particular, uh, but just kind of just kind of messing around. And uh, in my spirit, I heard the season of divine and supernatural miracles. The season of divine and supernatural miracles. If I have not, because I can't remember if I did, I want to welcome all my first time people that are here today. And of course, those of you that are committed and consistent followers, um, I do, uh, of course, uh, thank God for you as well. But the Lord, I heard in my spirit the season of, uh, of supernatural. Uh, and, and divine miracles. The season of supernatural and divine miracles. And the spirit of the Lord said this to me. He says, but I want you to, as you impart this word of truth into the lives of the people, I want you to help them to understand and comprehend and ascertain uh, what a miracle is all about, what a miracle is all about, what would consist of a miracle, because oftentimes uh, when we hear the word miracle uh, in the house of God, amongst the church of God and the kingdom of God, oftentimes uh, when we hear of the word miracle, uh, we we discern and comprehend that uh, as a card uh, to just sit down and wait on God. The Lord says he's going to give me a miracle. This is just my season to cool out, take a chill pill, find myself a beach with some nice blue water and get myself a glass of iced tea and just wait on the Lord. Nada. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Oftentimes when we interpret the word miracle, we feel as though that when God says he's about to give us a miracle, that God has given us a card to just pretty much for the most part sit down and chill. And uh, and that that is not the case. That is not the case because even when you are a recipient, hey, LaWanda, good to see you. Uh, even when you are a recipient uh, of a miracle, uh, even when God gives you a miracle, God, watch this now, requires your participation. Uh, this is going to be a season, and please hear me when I say this, uh, uh, it is going to be a season. Hey, uh, Lady Maria, blessings to you. Good to see you. Uh, it is going to be a season of uh, supernatural 
uh, and, and divine miracles, a season of supernatural and divine miracles, but God is going to require uh, 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 your uh, uh, participation. He is going to require your participation. Uh, God is going to require uh, your contribution and your association uh, where the miracle is concerned. Wherever there is a miracle, there is participation, there is association, and there is contribution. God is going to require your engagement. This is not going to be a season just because the heavens have opened and miracles have been released everywhere. Uh, this is not going to be a season where you just sit back and, 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 and in your mind, wait on God. You know, we've got, we've got this thing about waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm, you know, I'm, what do you, I'm just, just, just waiting on the Lord. You know, God's going to move. I'm just, I'm just chilling out, waiting for the Lord to move. Well, listen, if you're going to be chilling out, waiting till the Lord to move, you might be chilling till Christ comes back to get the church and God ain't going to ever move. Because that's not what miracles are all about. Miracles are going to require your participation. Miracles are going to require your engagement. Miracles uh, 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 Lady Maria <laughs> will require uh, your your contribution. And in other words, here here is what happens in a miracle. And I want you to get this and please hear this. Get this and hear this. Here is what happens in a miracle. In a miracle, God does what you cannot do, but He expects you to do what you can do. Did everybody get that? Did everybody get that? That, that, that's what happens in the process of miracles. What happens in the process of a miracle? And I want to drop you down into something. I want you to give, I want to give you some insight and, and some understanding and some comprehension. In the process of a miracle, God does what you cannot do. But then he leans on you and expect you to do what you can do. Now get this and hear this now, and please understand this. If you don't get this, you're going to miss this. Whenever God releases miracles from the heavens, whenever God releases miracles from the heavens, they will stay suspended in the spirit. Watch this now. They will stay, they will remain uh, suspended uh, in the spirit until you do what you have been commanded to do. When you do what you have been commanded to do, watch this now, here it is, then God steps in and do what you can't do. God's not going to do what you can't do first and then wait for you to do what you can do and then release the miracle. No, God is going to sit back. God is going to, God is going to sit back and he's going to wait for you to do what you are expected to do. He's going to wait for you to do what you have been commanded to do. He's going to sit back and wait for you to do your part. I got Bible on this. Stay with me. And when you do what God has commanded you to do in the miracle process, when you do what God has commanded you to do, then God will turn around and do what you do not have the ability, nor the dexterity, nor the capacity to do. God was, in the book of Exodus chapter 14, don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, somebody says, this is already blessing me, bless you. In the book of Exodus chapter 14, God's about to give Moses and the children of Israel a miracle in relation to the crossing of the Red Sea. For those of us in whom are intimate with the story, in the book of, of Exodus chapter 14, God's about to give uh, 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 Moses and, and the children of Israel a miracle uh, in relation to the crossing of the Red Sea. But for those of us in whom are intimate with the story, before God parted the waters of the Red Sea, he gave Moses an instruction. 
He says, I'm going to do what you can't do. You do not have the ability nor the dexterity nor the capacity to part the waters of the Red Sea. He says, but Moses, what you can do is that you can stretch forth your rod. So before God does the miracle of parting the waters of the Red Sea, Moses has to do what God commanded him to do, which was stretch forth his rod. And upon stretching forth his rod, then God comes back and God opens up and he parts the waters of the Red Sea. And Moses and the children of Israel were able to walk across the Red Sea on dry ground. There was a miracle that was performed. What's a miracle? A miracle is when God does what I do not have the ability nor the capacity nor the dexterity to do. There was a miracle that was performed. What's the, what was the miracle, prophet? God parted the Red Sea. Moses did what God commanded him to do. And then God came back and did what Moses didn't have the ability to do. Exodus chapter 14. Um, if you go to the book of Joshua chapter 3, there's another miracle that is about to be performed. God is about to roll back the waters of Jordan. But before God rolls back the waters of Jordan, God gives Joshua specific instructions. God says to Joshua, how in the children of Israel, he says, listen, I am about to perform a miracle. What's a miracle? A miracle is something that you nor I have the ability nor the dexterity nor the capacity to bring into fruition and into manifestation. That's the definition of a miracle. When we give the definition of a miracle, a miracle is something that you nor I have the ability nor the dexterity nor the capacity nor the wisdom nor the insight nor the no, nor the no how nor the knowledge to bring into manifestation and into fruition. But yet at the same time, we play a part. At the same time, we participate. At the same time, we contribute. In the book of Joshua chapter 3, God is about to roll back the waters of Jordan. But before having done so, for those of us in whom are intimate with the text, for those of us in whom are Bible readers, if you remember, God commands Joshua to do what? To step into the brinks of the waters. He commands Joshua, he commands the priests to step into the brinks of the waters. And God pretty much says to Joshua, when you do what you can do, then I'm going to come back and do what you don't have the ability to do. When you do what I have commanded you to do, then I'm going to come back and do what you cannot do. Oftentimes, when God releases and relinquishes miracles from heaven, many of us miss the opportunity of stepping into the manifestation and the fruition of the miracle because we've not yet done what God has commanded us to do. Think about the miracles that you have missed out on because God has commanded you to do something that still you have not yet done. I'm teaching already. I said I'm teaching already. Y'all ain't responding, but I'm teaching already. Think about the miracles that you have missed out on because God had the ability to do his part, but you didn't do your part. And because you didn't do your part, God didn't do his part. Because you didn't do what God had commanded you to do, God didn't step in and do what you didn't have the ability to do. For those of us in whom are intimate with the text, when you read the book of Joshua chapter 3, you will discover that when Joshua does what God commanded him to do, then God came back and did what Joshua didn't have the ability to do. God commanded Joshua to step into the brink of the waters. And when Joshua stepped into the brink of the waters, watch this now, the rivers of Jordan of the water of the water of Jordan was rolled back and Joshua and the children of Israel were able to walk across on dry ground. For those of us that are intimate with the text, uh, the Bible says that the river was at high time. It, it says that Jordan overflowed its banks all the time at harvest. Jordan overflowed its banks all the time at harvest. Jordan overflowed its banks 
all the time at harvest. In other words, whenever harvest came, whenever harvest came, crossing the Jordan River was a very fearful time because it overflowed its banks all the time at harvest. The river went crazy at harvest. The river was agitated at harvest. The river overflowed its banks at harvest. You will always be able to detect and discern when it is harvest time because God will command you to do something at one of the most fearful times in your life. Are y'all still here? Type in a number one if you're still here. If you're still here, type in a number one because I want to make sure you're getting this. I want to make sure you're getting this because somebody's about to get delivered. Somebody's about to get delivered. Hey, Lady Bradford, good to see you. Somebody's about to get delivered. So in Joshua chapter three, God's about to perform a miracle. He's about to perform a miracle. But before God does what Joshua couldn't do, God says, what I'm going to need you to do, Joshua, is that I'm going to need you to do what you can do. I'm going to do what you can't do. But then you come back and do what you can do. And in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, before I drop this prophecy on you, before I drop this prophecy on you, I want you to get this. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, if you remember, for those of us in whom are intimate Bible readers, there was a man by the name of Naaman who had leprosy. A man by the name of Naaman who had leprosy, who was commanded before his healing to rinse himself or to dip himself in muddy Jordan seven times. For those of us in whom are Bible readers, if you remember in 2 Kings chapter 5, I'm, I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to give you illustrations. I'm trying to give you examples whereby when miracles took place, when God stepped in and did what somebody couldn't do, that they themselves had to do what they could do before God stepped in and did what they couldn't do. I'm giving you illustrations. I'm giving you examples of how miracles come to pass and come into fruition. I'm telling you, when I woke up this morning, the Lord began to minister to me and speak to me, download into me, impart into my spirit that we are in a season of divine and supernatural miracles. He says, but my son, I want you to have the people to understand how a miracle comes into manifestation, how a miracle comes into fruition. God just doesn't just give out miracles for free. You know, well, there's a miracle coming to your house and you just kind of sit there and don't say, okay, Lord, okay, rain down. I'm, I'm waiting for the miracle. Break. No, no, no. It doesn't happen that way. Many of us are missing the opportunities to step into the manifestation of a miracle because we do not have insight and understanding of the process in relation to how miracles come into fruition. Second Kings chapter five, there was a man by the name of Naaman who was dealing with leprosy. God commands him to dip himself in the money Jordan seven times. Naaman could not dip himself three times and expect God to heal him. He could not dip himself four times and expect God to heal him. He could not dip himself five times and expect God to heal him. What, what are you saying, prophet? Some of you all are doing some of what God has commanded you to do. But the reason why you've not seen the manifestation and the fruition of the miracle is because you've not done all of what God commanded you to do. I'm helping somebody. If you get this. If you get this, somebody is about to step into a miracle. He was commanded to dip himself seven times. He couldn't dip himself three times and see God heal him. He couldn't dip himself four times and see God heal him. He couldn't dip himself five times and see God heal him. He couldn't dip himself six times and see God heal him. He couldn't dip himself six and three quarters of a time and see God heal him. He couldn't dip himself six and a half times and see God heal him. He he couldn't dip himself six and three, four times and see God heal him. He couldn't dip himself 6.99 times and see God. He had to dip himself in the rivers of Jordan seven times. He had to obey the specific strategic instruction that was given him. And upon doing so, God healed him. 
prophet, what are you saying? Some of us are not stepping into miracles. Watch this now. Because either, number one, we're not obeying God at all. Or number two, we're halfway obeying, obeying God. Can I tell you that halfway obedience is disobedience? Can I get somebody to type that on the screen for me? Type that on the screen for me. My, that was good to me. I don't know if that was good to anybody else, but it was good to me. It was good to me. I want you to type that on the screen. Type on the screen. So halfway obedience is disobedience. There it is. Thank you, woman of God. Did everybody get that? Halfway obedience is disobedience. Halfway obedience is disobedience. What does that mean, prophet? What are you talking about? I'm just coming in. What are you talking about halfway obedience? You cannot do a part of what God has commanded you to do and expect God to deliver you. You've got to do everything that God commands you to do if you want God to deliver you. Halfway obedience is disobedience. Second Kings chapter five, God commands Naaman to dip himself in the muddy rivers of Jordan seven times. He couldn't do it five times and expect God to heal him. He couldn't do it six times and expect God to heal him. He couldn't go to God and say, well, God, listen, I know you told me to dip myself seven times, but I did dip myself 6.5 times. I, I dipped myself 6.8 times. God, you've got to give me credit for something. God says, listen, I don't give you credit until you obey me and obey me all the way. He couldn't go to God and say, Lord, well, you know, I obeyed you uh, 6.9 times, I, you know, 6.9 times. You know, I, I was I was close to seven. No, God says, no, I commanded you to dip yourself seven times. Many of us are missing the opportunity to walk into a miracle because we are not doing what God has commanded us to do. How many miracles have you missed? because you've not obeyed God. I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me and God said to me that this was the season of divine and supernatural miracles. He says, but son, have them to understand how the process of a miracle comes into manifestation and into fruition. I've already told you about Exodus chapter 14, whereby God was about to part the waters of the Red Sea and commanded Moses to stretch forth his rod. Before God did what he did, Moses had to do what God had commanded him to do. I told you about Joshua chapter 3, how that God was about to roll back the rivers of Jordan. But before God did what he did, Joshua had to do what God had commanded him to do, which was to step into the brink of the waters where the river of Jordan was over flowing his banks. I told you how that God was about to heal miraculously the body of Naaman. God was about to do for Naaman what Naaman didn't have the ability to do for himself. That's what a miracle is. A miracle is when God does for me what I do not have the ability to do for myself. It is when God does for you what you do not have the ability, the dexterity, and the capacity to do for yourself. God was about to heal the body of Naaman, but before God stepped in and did what Naaman couldn't do, Naaman had to do what God had commanded him to do, which was to step into the waters of Jordan or dip himself rather into the rivers of Jordan uh, seven times. In the gospel, according to Luke chapter 8, in the gospel, according to Luke chapter 8, there was a woman with an issue of blood who that when pressing her way through the crowd, touching the hem of Jesus' garment, was made whole. There was something that she had to do before God did what he did. God, God healed her of this issue that she had had for a very long time. But she had to press her way through the crowd, touch the hem of Jesus' garment. In, in, in the book of John chapter five, there was a man at the pool of Bethesda in whom had been laying for 38 long years. But before God did what the man of Bethesda couldn't do, the man at the pool of Bethesda had to do what he could do. 
For those of us in whom are intimate with the text, if you remember, Jesus said to the man at the pool of Bethesda, pick up your bed and walk. My God, I feel glory. He says, pick up your bed. I'm going to do what you don't have the ability to do, but then you've got to do what I'm commanding you to do. Watch this now. And if you don't do, God says, what I'm commanding you to do, then I will never do what you don't have the ability to do. Many of us are missing out on miracles. You better hear me because we're not doing what God commands us to do. So therefore, God is not stepping in and doing what he has or what we do not, what we do not have the, the ability to do. Blessings to you, pretty, is not enough. Good to see you. Are you with me? Are you with me? The man at the pool of Bethesda had to do what Jesus commanded him to do. Because a prerequisite of stepping into the miracle, the prerequisite of stepping into the moment of the miracle was doing what Jesus had commanded him to do. Many of us are not stepping into the moment of the miracle because we're not doing what Jesus has commanded us to do. Jesus said to the man in the pool of Bethesda, I am about to do what you do not have the ability, nor the dexterity, nor the capacity to do. If you remember, Jesus walked up to the man at the pool of Bethesda and said, will thou be made whole? The man begins to write and speak this long dissertation. Well, you know, I have no one uh, to put me into the water when the water is troubled, but every time the water is troubled, someone steppeth in before me. Jesus says, listen, I didn't ask you all of that. I ask you one question. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want want to be set free. I'm not concerned about who didn't help you. Please hear me by the Holy Ghost. In this season, Jesus is not concerned about who didn't help you, who should have helped you, who could have helped you. Jesus is going to help you. The only thing he's expecting you to do is to do what he has commanded you to do. Who should have helped you, who could have helped you, who didn't help you, who had the ability. Doesn't even matter in this season. Jesus is going to help you. All he wants you to do is do what he's commanding you to do. Jesus says, listen, I'm not, I'm not concerned about who didn't help you and who could have helped you and, 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 and who should have helped you and, and, and who, and who, and who, and who didn't help you. I'm not concerned about none of that. All I'm concerned about is that you do in this season what I'm commanding you to do. And you are about to see God move in a way that you never imagined, that you never could imagine. Jesus said to the man at the pool of Bethesda, will thou be made whole? Pick up thy bed and walk. Pick up thy bed and walk. And when the man did what Jesus commanded him to do, watch this now. Jesus, in spite of who didn't help him, performed a miracle. Please hear me. In spite of who should have helped you, but didn't help you, if you do what God is commanding you to do in this season, who could have helped you, didn't help you, should have helped you, won't even matter because you'll get everything that God has purposed for you. You'll get everything that God has promised you. Mark chapter 3. Jesus is about to perform another miracle. I'm telling you that miracles are going to take your participation. The Lord said to me, tell the people that this is going to be a season of divine and supernatural miracles. He says, but my son, I want you to help them to understand what a miracle is all about. That is not your chill pill card. Are you with me? Miracle season is not your chill pill card. That's not the time for you to get yourself a cold glass of lemonade with a tuna fish sandwich and sit down and watch Oprah Winfrey. Tell my God, I'm just waiting on you. You're going to be waiting until the cows come home. And I don't believe cows are coming home, which means you ain't getting no miracle, y'all. Are you with me? He says, I want you to have them to understand that miracle season is not a chill pill season. Miracle season is not, it's not a chill, it's not a chill, it's not, it's not my chill pill card. It's not, it's not my season to just sit back and do nothing and wait for God to do everything because I'm telling you that's not going to happen. 
Some of you all are missing the manifestation of miracles because you've 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 interpret you've interpret miracle season as your chill pill card season, and all you do is sit back, do nothing, and just wait for God to work His show and do it. God gonna bust a move. God ain't busting no move if you don't do what you've been commanded Him to do. What He's commanded you to do. Y'all better help me here. Are you with me? I said, God ain't busting no move if you're not doing. God's about to show up and show out. God ain't going to show up nor show out if you ain't doing what God commanded him to do. You know, we got to get rid of all, all of this foolishness, all of this crazy stuff, rhythming and rhyming and making everything sound good for folk. Listen, we need to hear truth. God going to bust a move and, you know, God's about to show up and show out. If you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, God ain't going to show up and he ain't going to show out. He ain't busting the move for nobody. Can I help somebody today? I'm trying to help you. If you get this, I'm telling you, if you get this, if you get this, you're about to step into something. If you get this, you're going to show enough, see God do a miracle. He says, tell the people, tell the people that this is going to be a season of divine and supernatural miracles. He says, but man of God, help them to understand that miracles do not come to pass automatic. Okay, I'm sorry. We got to speak English here. If you don't speak English, I'm going to have to block you because I don't understand you. He says, but help them to understand, my son, that miracles do not come to pass automatic. Just because God says he's releasing miracles doesn't mean that you sit back and you do nothing. It's going to require a corresponding action. You're going to have to do something. Are you with me? You're going to have to do something. In the gospel according to Mark chapter 3, Jesus is about to perform a miracle. He's about to do something that someone doesn't have the ability to do. What's a miracle, prophet? It is when God does what I do not have the ability, nor the dexterity, nor the capacity to do, but yet there is a part for me to play. Did everybody get that? A miracle is when God does what I do not have the ability, nor the dexterity, nor the capacity to do, but yet at the same time, there is a part for me to play. I cannot make the miracle come into fruition. I cannot make the miracle come into manifestation, but watch this now. I can activate the miracle. That was good. I can activate the miracle. I can't make the miracle come into manifestation. I can't make the miracle come into fruition, but I can Activate the miracle. In, in Exodus chapter 14, when Moses stretches forth his rod, he activates the miracle. In Joshua chapter 3, when Joshua steps into the brink of the waters, he activated the miracle. In 2 Kings chapter 5, when Naaman stepped or dipped himself rather into the muddy rivers of Jordan, he activated the miracle. In Luke, in the gospel, according to Luke chapter 8, when the woman with the issue of blood pressed her way through the crowd and touched Jesus's garment, she activated the miracle. In, in, Josh, in, John, in the gospel according to John chapter 5, uh, when the man at the pool of Bethesda picked up his bed and walked, he activated the miracle. We do not have the ability, nor the dexterity, nor the capacity to bring the miracle into fruition or into manifestation, but you and I do have the ability to activate the miracle. God says, if you get this, if you get this, if you get this, if you get this, you are about to begin to start activating miracles all around you. All around you. See, many of us do not step into the miracle because we do not activate the miracle. What activates the miracle? What activates the miracle is when I do what God has commanded me to do. My God, I feel glory. The gospel, according to Mark chapter 3, the word of God says that there was a man who had a withered hand. A man who had a diseased hand, who had a bad hand, a man who had a short hand. One hand was shorter than the other. The, the hand was withered. Y'all get me? Hmm? His hand was withered. Jesus steps up to the man with the withered hand. He says, listen, I'm about to perform a miracle. I'm about to do something that you don't have.
have the ability to do. His hand was with it. I'm about to do something that you don't have the capacity to do. I'm about to do something that you don't have the dexterity to do. I'm about to do something that you cannot do of your own. But here it is. I need you to activate what I'm about to manifest. Yo, you better get this. His hand was with it. I, I need you to activate what I'm about to manifest. I need you to activate what I'm about to bring into fruition. Jesus says to the man, I need you to stretch forth your hand. And when the man takes the withered hand, when the man takes his diseased hand, when the man takes the hand that was shorter than the other, and he began to stretch forth the hand, he activated the miracle working power of God and the hand that was with it was made hold as the other. Are you with me? Are y'all with me? When he stretched forth his hand, he activated the miracle working power of God. Exodus 14, Joshua chapter 3, 2 Kings chapter 5, Luke chapter 8, John chapter chapter 5, Mark chapter 3, and every illustration that I just gave you, and every example of a miracle that I just gave you, somebody had a part to play before it came to pass. Are y'all with me? Rhonda, am I teaching? In every illustration that I gave you, in every example that I gave you of a miracle that God or Jesus did, in every example that I gave you, Lawanda said, sir, you're teaching. In every example that I gave you and every illustration that I gave you of a miracle that came to pass, watch this, somebody had a part to play. Somebody had to do their part before God did his part. Somebody had to do what God had commanded them to do before God did what he himself had the ability to do. Rhonda, I hope they're getting this. Think about how many miracles. Think about how many miracles that God had for you. And yet sometimes we sit back and we're talking about things ain't happening for me. Ain't nothing going right for me. Ain't nothing going well for me. Ain't, ain't nothing opening up for me. Ain't nothing lining up for me. Could it be that it ain't happening for you? It's not opening up for you. It's not lining up for you because you're not doing what God has commanded you to do. Could it be that God has miracles in reserve for you better than five years ago, but because you've not done what he's commanded you to do, he's not released them. It is his desire to release them, but watch this now. You have not activated them. What activates my miracle is obedience. Could, could it be, think about this. Could it be that there's, that there's a room in heaven? Let me fix this. Can I fix this the way I want to? Could it be, Lady Bradford, could it be that there's a room in heaven there's a door in heaven with your name on it. Could it be, let me, can I fix this? Let me fix this. Let me fix this. Could it be that there's a door in heaven with your name on it? And behind that door is every miracle that God desires to do for you. Behind that door is every miracle that God desires to grant for you. Behind that particular door is every miracle that God desires to give you. And could it be 
there are three years of miracles behind that door that God wanted to release three years ago, but he can't release them because you've not activated them. Could it be there are miracles that you should have walked in a year ago? Could it be that there are miracles that you, that you should have walked in five years ago, three years ago? Could it be that there are miracles that you should have walked in five months ago, but because you have not activated them, God has not released them? See, before God can release the miracle, I've got to activate the miracle. Stay with me. I said before God can release the miracle, I've got to activate the miracle. How do I activate what God desires to release? I activate the miracle with my obedience. Moses, Exodus 14, stretch forth your rod. Joshua, Joshua chapter 3, Step into the brink of the waters. Naaman, 2 Kings chapter 5. Dip yourself into the muddy rivers of water. Muddy, muddy rivers of Jordan. Man at the pool of Bethesda. John chapter 5. Pick up your bed and walk. The Gospel of Mark chapter 3. The man with the withered hand. Stretch forth your hand. How do I activate the miracle working power of God? I do what I have the ability to do. And when I do what I have the ability to do, then God comes back and he does what I cannot do. This is going to be a season of divine and supernatural miracles. The word miracle comes from the Greek word marikulum. The word miracle comes from the Greek word marikulum. The word marikulum in our modern day vernacular simply means to make wonder. Bless you, Rhonda. The word maraculum. The word maraculum in our modern day vernacular. Hey, Pastor Pitts, good to see you, man of God. The word maraculum in our modern day vernacular simply means to make wonder. Miracle. Maraculum. Make wonder. Miracle. Maraculum. Make wonder. Miracle. Maraculum. Make wonder. God is about to do something. To make you wonder. The word maraculum in our modern day vernacular simply means to wow you. God's about to wow you. Anybody, anybody desire to be wowed by God? W-O-W-E-D. Anybody desire to be wowed by God? God is about to wow you. God's about to blow your mind in this season. He's about to wow you. God's about to blow your mind. You're going to look and say, oh my gosh, how did this happen for me? How, how did I get from point A to point B? How in the world did this happen for little old me? How did this happen to me? God's about to mess you up. But this is going to be a season when you're going to have to obey the word of God to you. You're going to have to obey. Listen, this is going to be a season where if you feel like God is telling you to do something, just do it. Just do it. Are you with me? And and I know I know I know that that in God, 
we cannot trust our feelings because, because this is not about feeling, it's about faith. Are you with me? It's not about feelings, it's about faith. It's not about feelings, it's about faith. I want you to, uh, there's someone here who has a question. Direct it, evidently you've come in late. I need you to direct all questions to my website, www.prophetmitchell.org. I do not answer questions on Periscope because that's not my assignment, okay? I'm not being rude, I'm just being honest. I am not here to answer questions. Go to my website, www.prophetmitchell.org. If you have a question, go to the website and I will address it at the proper time. I'm here to minister now, all right? I'm here to minister. But God's about to wow you. God's about to wow you. God's, God's about to wow you. But it is significantly imperative in this season that you're doing what he tells you to do. Because whatever God desires to do, what's going to activate that is your doing what he tells you to do. Are you with me? What activates that is that you do what he tells you to do. Don't miss the miracle that God desires to do for you because you refuse to do what he tells you to do. Or you only do a portion of what he commands you to do and then expect God to, to deliver you. I told you in the book of 2 Kings chapter 7, chapter 5 rather, Naaman had to dip himself seven times. He couldn't dip himself five times and expect God to heal him. He couldn't dip himself six and a half times and expect God to heal him. He couldn't dip himself six and three, four times and expect God to heal him. I cannot carry out partial acts of obedience and expect God to do what he's, what he's promised to do. Partial acts of obedience is not going to make it. I have got to obey God and I've got to obey God completely, not partially, but completely. Partial acts of obedience equals disobedience. Did everybody get that? I feel glory now. I said partial acts of obedience is disobedience. Some of us are walking around disappointed right now because you have partially obeyed God and expected God to give you a miracle. And God says, I'm not going to reward you off of partial acts of disobedience. You've got to obey me fully. Listen, when God commanded Joshua and the children of Israel to march around the walls of Jericho seven times, one time a day, and over seven day march around seven times, they had to do exactly what God said. They couldn't, they couldn't march around three times and expected the walls to fall down. They couldn't march around five times and expected the walls to fall down. They couldn't march around six and a half times and expect the walls to fall down. Some of you all have marched, but you've only marched around the walls six and three quarters of a time and you expected the miracle years ago and it hasn't come into manifestation nor fruition and that's because God says I will not and cannot reward partial acts of, of obedience. I'm not going to reward partial acts of obedience. You can't bargain with God. You, I said you cannot bargain with God where obedience is concerned. God can't, God ain't going to command you to march around the wall seven times. And then you come back and say, well, Lord, I didn't march seven, but I did march six and three fourths of a quarter. God says, no, you partially obeyed. Partial obedience means disobedience in the eyes of God. God does not bargain with me and nor does he bargain with you where obedience is concerned. When God says march around the wall seven times, he means march around the wall seven times and not six and three quarters. When the Lord began to minister to me, I'm not done yet. When God began to minister to me, when the Lord said to me that this was the season of divine and supernatural miracles, he also brought me to the gospel according to John chapter 4, right about verse 38. And I want you to get this and hear this. He who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When God began to speak to me and minister to me about the season of miracles, 
divine miracles, supernatural miracles. He brought me to a scripture in the gospel according to John. Chapter four, right about verse 38. Can someone put John four and 38 on the screen for me? Before I go any further, John 4 and 38. Can someone put John 4 and 38 on the screen? When God began to minister to me about the season of miracles, the season of divine and supernatural miracles, he brought me to, thank you. He brought me to the gospel according to John. Chapter 4, right about verse 38. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, a precious Lord. John 4 and 38 says this, God said, I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men have labored and you are entered into their labors. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men have labored, but you have entered in to their labors. This is going to be a season. I want you to get this and hear this. Man, I feel this. Whew. This is going to be a season whereby God is going to allow many of you to walk through doors that other people have labored for. You gotta get this, because this this sounds this sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. But it's going to be a season whereby God is going to allow you to walk through doors that other people have labored for, but you're just going, you're just going to walk through them. The favor of God is about to fall upon you and you are about to walk through doors that other people have labored for, have worked for, have toiled for, struggled for. But the Lord said, you're just going to walk through them. God's going to allow you to lay hold to something that you haven't worked for. It's going to allow you to lay hold to something that you haven't labored for. God says, watch this now, watch this. God says, I will give you houses full of good things that you didn't even feel. I'll give you wells that you didn't even dig. I will give you vineyards that you didn't even plant. I'll give you houses full of good things that you didn't even feel. Prophet Stanley, good to see you, man. I'll give you houses full of good things that you didn't even feel. 
I'll turn around and give you a well that you didn't even dig. I'll give you vineyards that you didn't even plant. When God brought me, when God began to talk about the season of divine and supernatural miracles, and he brought me to, to the gospel uh, according to John chapter 4, right about verse 38, and, 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 and John 4 and 38 simply says, I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men have labored, and yet you have entered into their labors. I said, God, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about that you sent them to reap whereon they bestowed no labor? God says, remember when I said I'll give you Houses full of good things that you didn't even feel. Remember when I said I'll give you wells that you didn't even dig. Remember when I said I'll give you vineyards that you yourselves and olive groves that you yourselves didn't even plant. God's going to allow you. I want you to hear me and get this. God's going to allow you in this season. To walk in stuff that you yourself haven't even labored for. Someone else labored. Someone else toiled. Someone else worked. But God says, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to allow you to walk into their labors. Hear it again. Listen to what the word of God says. John 4 and 38, I sent you. To reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored. And you are entered into their labor. See, I, listen, I need a word of God. Anybody need a word from God? I, I don't need folks screaming at me and shouting at me and rhyming words. No, I need to hear a word from the Lord. Don't come and bring me no Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pedal, pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling. No, 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 no. I need, I need, I need the Holy Ghost. I need a word from the Lord. I need a word from the Lord. I don't need rhythm and rhyme. Tell me what God is saying. Screaming at me and hollering at me. Tell me what God is saying. God said, God said, this is the season. This is the season. This is the season where people of God are about to step into stuff. And it's God's way of showing you that he's God. It's God's way of showing you that he's sovereign. It's God's way of showing you that he can do what he wants to do Whatever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it. And can't nobody call him on it because he's God. I feel glory now. I feel glory now. John 4 and 38. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you are entered into they're laboring. I am going to allow you to reap in a place where you didn't even labor. I'm going to allow you to reap in a place where you didn't even work. I'm going to allow you to reap in a place where you didn't even toil. It's going to be called the divine favor of God. I'm going to allow you to access something that you didn't even work for. I want you to, uh, I want you to go to the website and I want you to sow. I want you to sow a $38 supernatural miracle seed. I want you to do that. $38 supernatural miracle seed. 
supernatural, meaning something that only God himself can do. I want you to sow a $38 supernatural miracle seed. Pastor Pitts, you are about to acquire a building that you don't even have money for. And I don't take it back. I don't take it back. Thank you, MB, MB uh, Thompson. I appreciate you. The cash app is dollar sign Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. If you want to show to PayPal, you have to go to the website. It is www.profitmitchell.org. www.profitmitchell.org. Cash app is dollar sign Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. I want you to sow a $38 supernatural miracle seed. I was talking to Pastor Pitts. Pastor Pitts, you are about to acquire a building. I see a building of some sort. I, I have no idea what this is. I have no idea whether this building is going to be for your personal use or whether it's going to be for your church use. But I see a building that you are about to acquire and it's going to be a miracle. It's going to be a miracle going to be a miracle. I have no idea whether this is for personal use or for business use or for church use, but there's a building that you are about to acquire. It's going to be a miracle. Blessings to you, Rhonda. Thank you so very much. A building that you are about, there's the, there's the website, www.profitmitchell.org, or there's the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. There's a miracle that you are about to acquire, a building that you are about to acquire that is, that is going, that is going to be. That is going to be a miracle. It's going to be a miracle. And Pastor Pitts, the Lord is telling me to tell you, and, and I don't I don't know why this is. I don't know what this is all about. I don't know what this is all about, but I'm going to share with you what God is sharing with me. The Lord just said to me, he says, son, tell him that I said, do not define his future by his past. Do not define his future by his past. Do not, do not define his presence, his present by his past. I don't know what this is all about, but whatever happened in the past, it's just that, it's past. It is your, it is your history. It's your history. The Lord said, tell you, don't allow your history to define your destiny. I don't even know what this is all about, but I just, I just, I hear God. He said, tell him, I said, do not allow his history to define his destiny. Your history is behind you. Your destiny is before you. Can I help somebody? He said, tell him, do not allow his history to define his destiny. Dr. Hawthorne, good to see you. Tell him, do not allow his history to define his destiny. Your history is behind you. Your destiny is before you. Your history is what has happened. Your destiny is what's about to happen. Do not allow what has happened to define what's about to happen. What has happened 
has done nothing but matured you and develop you, made you stronger, made you better. Pastor Pitch got to me to tell you, do not allow your history to define your destiny. Your history is what's behind you. Your destiny is what's before you. Don't allow your history to define your destiny. What has happened has happened and it's over. It's done nothing but mature you and develop you and made you better. And I don't, I don't even know, I don't even know what this is all about. But the Lord told me to tell you, don't allow your history to define your destiny. And even though God is speaking to Pastor Pitts, there are so many of you who are drawing strength, the Lord just said from that particular word that I just gave to Pastor Pitts that was specifically for him. But the Lord said that there are so many of you in whom are drawing strength from that word even now. Do not allow your history to determine your destiny. Lawanda says, I am. Don't allow, you, listen, your history does not determine your destiny. Your history does not determine your destiny. Your history develops you for your destiny. Can I say that again? I'm going to say that again. Your history does not determine your destiny. Your history develops you for your destiny. What has happened does not determine what's about to happen. What has happened develops you for what's about to happen. What has happened matures you for what's about to happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Your history develops you for your destiny. It does not determine your destiny. So many people think that God has walked away from them and forgot about them because of their history. No, 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 no. Your history doesn't determine your destiny. It develops you for something greater. I said, it develops you for something greater. This is going to be a season of miracles for you. This is going to this is going to be a season of the miraculous like you have never seen before in your life. But remember but remember that in this season of miracles I've got to activate what God desires to release. Remember now, remember, remember what we've talked about in the early part of the scope. It is God who releases the miracle. But it's you and I who activates the miracle. God won't activate the miracle. We can't release the miracle. God releases the miracle. You and I activate the miracle. Remember that in miracles, in miracles, there is a part that, that, that you and I play, and there is a part that God plays. What is God's part? God's part in miracles is to do what you and I do not have the ability, nor the dexterity, nor the capacity to do. That's God's part. Our part in the miracle is to do what God has commanded us to do. Remember that if we do not do what God commanded us to do, God is not obligated to do what he has promised to do. What obligates him to do what he's promised to do is when you and I do what God has commanded us to do. My part is to activate the miracle. God's part is to release the miracle, but God will not release what I do not activate. 
How do we activate the miracle? Well, we talked about it earlier. It is your obedience that activates the miracle working power of God. In Exodus chapter 14, when Moses stretched forth his rod, he activated the miracle working power of God. In Joshua chapter 3, when he stepped into the brink, when Joshua stepped into the brink of the water, he activated the miracle working power of God. In 2 Kings chapter 5, when Naaman dipped himself in the muddy waters of Jordan, he activated the miracle working power of God. In the gospel, according to John chapter 5, when the man, when the uh, lame man by the pool of Bethesda picks up his bed and walks, he activates the miracle working power of God. In the gospel, according to Mark chapter 3, when the man with the withered hand stretched forth his hand, he activated the miracle working power of God. What activates the miracle working power of God is obedience. What activates the miracle working power of God is when I do what God has commanded me to do. It activates his power. How many miracles have you missed out on because you have not activated the miracle working power of God? You have the ability to activate the miracle working power of God. How many miracles have you missed out on because you did not activate the miracle working power of God through your obedience? When God commanded Joshua and the children of Israel to march around the walls of Jericho seven times, they had to march seven times. They couldn't march three times. They couldn't march four times. They couldn't march five times. They couldn't march six and three fourths. They couldn't give God partial obedience. See, we want to give God partial obedience, but expect a whole miracle. We, we, we want to give God half-hearted obedience, but then we want to expect a wholehearted miracle. God says, I'm not going to give you a wholehearted miracle off of half-hearted obedience. Obedience, you want a wholehearted miracle? You've got to give me whole obedience. Well, God, you know, I know you said march around the wall seven times. I did march around the wall six and three quarters of a time. I was almost there. God says almost ain't good enough. Almost. Almost there. We'll get you an almost miracle. You know what an almost miracle means? Nothing. God, I, I know you said seven times, but I, I did march around the walls six and three quarters of a time. I was almost there. God says, and you know what? I almost gave you a miracle. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on now. Hmm? Yeah, God, you had, you had to give me credit. I know you said seven times, God. I, I was almost there. God says, and guess what? I almost gave you a miracle. An almost miracle doesn't help you. An almost miracle doesn't do anything for you. An almost miracle is not a miracle at all. I almost, I was almost there. God said, and I almost gave you a miracle. Almost is not good enough in this season. Almost is not good enough. I've got to do what God is telling me to do. Somebody says, well, prophet, what, what if you feel that God is telling you to do something? Do it. What if you just feel that God is telling you to do something and, and you're not really sure about it? Do it. Th listen, this is a season. This is a season where I so can't miss God. That if I feel like God is saying something, I'm, watch this, I may not even be sure about it, but if I feel like God is saying something, I so don't want to miss him, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, even if I 
feel like he's saying, I am going to do it. I, listen, at the end of the day, I may find out that God had nothing to do with that. But do you not know that God honors your desire to obey him? He, he honors your desire to, oh, watch this now. He honors your desire to obey him even when you miss him. That's heavy. That's heavy. He honors your desire to obey him even when you miss him. God, you know what? I'm not even sure this is you. But because I feel that it's you, my God, I feel glory now, but because I feel that it's you, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't, I don't really know if this is you, but, but I think this is you. God honors. <sighs> He honors your desire to obey him. This is the season. This is the season where I activate Masadabaki. This is the season whereby I activate the miracle working power of God. I know that God desires to release the miracle, but I've got to activate it. Again, I ask you. Again, I ask you, Dr. Harthorn, how many miracles have we missed that God wanted to release, but because we didn't activate it, we didn't get it. There's a door. There's a door. And I'm, listen, I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to everybody. There is a door with your name on with your name on it, with miracles just for you. There's a door with your name on it, with miracles just for you. And watch this now. I can't activate your miracles. Your brothers can't activate your miracles. Your sisters can't activate your miracles. Your daddy, your mama, can activate your miracles. Your cousins, your aunts, and your uncles can't activate your miracles. Only you have the power to activate the miracles that God desires to release for you. And guess what? Watch this now. Watch this. Hear this. Watch this. Watch this now. Watch me flip the script and change the channel. Just as only you can activate the miracle. Only you can deactivate the miracle. Can't nobody else deactivate your miracles. Your mama can't deactivate them. Your daddy can't deactivate them. Your cousins, your aunts, and your uncles can't deactivate them. Greater than that, the devil can't even deactivate a miracle that God has for you. Only you can. I've set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing, saith the spirit of the living God, if you obey. And a curse, if you disobey. Can't nobody deactivate what God has for me but me. Can't nobody deactivate what God has for you but you. This is the season of divine miracles. This is a season of divine miracles.
Listen, I, listen, I don't care what, what folk try to do. Don't let the devil fool you. Voodoo, who do, you do, she do, she do, he do, y'all do. I don't care what, listen, can't nobody deactivate what God has for you but you. The power is in your hand. Glory. Y'all ain't saying nothing, y'all. Yeah, Prophet, Prophet Stanley, they, I hope that Pastor Pitts, I hope they're getting this. I hope they're getting this. Can't nobody deactivate the miracle working power of God in your life but you. They can do whatever they want to do, say whatever they want to say. This is the season of divine miracles, of divine supernatural miracles. And I, I decree and declare because I've heard from the Lord. I decree and declare that God is about to do something for you that only God can do. That's what a miracle, a miracle is something that God does for you that only God himself can do for you. That's what a miracle is. It is something that God does for you that only God himself can do. God's about to do miracles for you. God's about to release miracles for you. But remember, the process of releasing miracles is I've got to activate it. I've got to activate it. How many miracles have we missed out on? Because God desired to release them, but we didn't activate them. How do we activate them? By our obedience. Again, Exodus chapter 14, Moses activated the miracle working power of God. When he did what God commanded him to do, which was stretch forth his hand. And in, 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 in the gospel, according to Mark chapter three, that man activated the miracle working power of God when he did what Jesus commanded him to do, which was stretch forth his withered hand. Moses was commanded to step uh, to, uh, to stretch forth his hand, uh, stretch forth his rod and, and the waters of the Red Sea separated and departed. The man with the withered hand was commanded to stretch forth his hand and the withered hand was made whole as the other. How did each man activate the miracle working power of God? How did each man activate the miracle working power of God? They activated what God desired to release by obedience. This is the season where you activate what God desires to release. Are you with me? Just yesterday, and, and I'm going to say this, and I can't get into what it's all about until it comes into fruition. I can't get into what it's all about until it comes into fruition. Some things you can't tell folk until it happens. Joseph got himself in trouble telling his brothers what God had showed him prematurely. Some, some stuff you can't release prematurely. You, are y'all with me? You've got to know what to release and then you've got to know what to keep to yourself. See, you can't, you know, when God gives you something or God says something, you can't just go and tell everybody out of excitement. Are you with me? But there was something uh, just yesterday that I felt led by God to do and I did it. I did it. And the Lord just brought it back to my attention just now. I hadn't even thought about it. I hadn't even thought about it in the duration of this scope. And, and, and while I'm talking about what I'm talking about, God just brought this situation uh, back to my, back to my, God just brought the situation back to my remembrance. There was something uh, that God commanded me to do just yesterday, something that I knew I had to do, something that I felt like I should do. And I did it on the spur of the moment. I did it on the spur of the moment. As a matter of fact, I, if I got to be very, can I, let me be real honest with you and open and scientists and transparent. I started not to, because when God said it, I was like, Hmm, really? Uh, but then I couldn't continue, I couldn't continue driving and ignore it. 
I had to do it. And I did it. I did it. I did it. Something's coming out of it. Because I did it. I did it. My, my emotions were stirred when I did it. But I did it. I did it. And after I did it, after I did it, something occurred to me. And what occurred to me was this. Had I not did it, had I not did it, the door that God's about to open would not have opened. God said to me today, God said to me, he says, he says, when you did what I commanded you to do, son, or when you did what I commanded you to do or did to do on yesterday, you activated something. Every time I do what God commands me to do, I set something in motion. Even if I can't see it with my physical eyes yet, even if I can't touch it with my physical hands yet, even if I'm not wearing it or living in it or driving it, are y'all with me? Every time God commands me to do something, immediately upon having done so, I set something in motion. Remember when God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son? Even before he attempted to do it, the angel says, don't slay your son. Because now I know you fear God. Even before he attempted to do it, he had already set the ram in the bush in motion. Even before he attempted. Is that one of my students out there, Elder Veronica? Blessings to you. Good to see you. Are you with me? Even before he attempted, even before he attempted, to sacrifice his son Isaac. He had already activated and set in motion the ram in the bush because watch this now. He desired to obey God in his heart before he obeyed God in his flesh. Are you with me? Are y'all getting what I'm saying? If you're getting what I'm saying, type in a number one. I said he desired to obey God in his heart before he obeyed God in his flesh. He desired to obey God in his mind before he even walked into the act of obedience or the act of sacrificing his son. The angel shows up and says, don't do it. Now I know that you fear God. And when he looked behind him, the scripture says that there was a ram caught by his horns in the thicket of a bush. He activated something. He activated the manifestation of a ram in the bush when he desired to obey God. He activated the miracle working power of God. Again, I ask, how many miracles? Again, I ask, how many miracles have we missed out on because we have not activated the miracle working power of God? God desired to release the miracle. Watch this now. Oh my God, I just heard something. I just heard something. Watch this. God desired to release the miracle. But we never walked into the manifestation of what God desired to release because we didn't activate the miracle working power of God by way of obedience or by way of doing what God commanded us to do. The Lord reminded me, he said, son, on yesterday, when I commanded you to do what you did and you did it, he 
says, I know you haven't seen it yet. I know you haven't touched it yet, but God reminded me. He said, you set something in motion. My God, I feel something right now. Something's pushing me up my back. He said, you set something in motion when you did what I commanded you to do yesterday. You, you activated something. You don't see it with your eyes yet. And you haven't tangibly touched it with your hands yet. He says, but you activated something. When you do what God is telling you to do, even if you feel like God is telling you, I told you God honors your desire to obey him. When you do what God commands you to do, even when you don't see it with your hands, even when you don't see it rather with your physical eyes, and you haven't touched it yet with tangibly with your hands, you activate something. You activate the miracle working power of God and you set something in motion. I can't see it with my physical eyes. I can't touch it, Veronica, with with my with my physical hands, but but I did what God commanded me to do and I just activated something. I just set something in motion. Man, I'm telling you, I'm feeling this thing in my spirit so because somebody is about to walk into a miracle because you are about to activate the miracle working power of God. Somebody is about to walk into a miracle because you are about to set something in motion. You're about to, you're about to set something in motion. Oh my God, I feel this now. I feel this. In the book of Hosea, God says, my people are being destroyed. Hosea 4 and 6. And they're being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Blessings to you, Lawanda. Thank you. My people are being destroyed. And they're being destroyed, God says, for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. You know what's destroying us? A lack of knowledge of the word of God. Because very few people know that before you can access a miracle, you've got to activate a miracle. Let me say that again. Very few people, Dr. Harthorn, very few people know that before you can access a miracle, you've got to activate a miracle. Too many of us are trying to access what we haven't activated. My God, I felt that in the glory. Veronica, did you get that? I said, I said too many of us. That's one of my prophetic students. I said too many of us, too many of us are trying to access what we haven't activated. You cannot access what you haven't activated. In order to access it, you've got to activate it. Many of us, let's listen, there are miracles. That are, there are miracles that are being held up in the spirit. Because you want to access something that you haven't activated. God, I feel the glory. Exodus chapter 14, Moses activated the miracle working power of God when he stretched forth his rod, when he did what God commanded him to do. Watch this now. He activated the miracle working power of God. And when he activated the power, then he was able to access the power. When he activated the miracle working power of God, he was able to access the miracle working power of God. But had he not activated the miracle working power of God, he would not have been able to access the miracle working power of God. In this season, for those of you who get this, in this season, you are about to activate 
the miracle working power of God. And when you activate it, you're going to access it. When you activate it, you're going to walk in the miracle. You're going to experience the miracle. You're going to enjoy the miracle. This is a season of divine and supernatural miracles. I told you earlier that the Lord said to me to tell the people that I am releasing miracles everywhere. Somebody says you are an activator prophet. My God, I receive that. Hallelujah. I receive that. This is going to be a season, God says, of divine and supernatural miracles. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you as of today, and I don't take this back, God is releasing miracles everywhere. There are miracles everywhere, I should say. There are miracles everywhere. But in order for you to tap into them, you have to activate them. God desires to release, but you have to activate, I should say. You've got to activate. You activate them. You're about to tap into them. You activate them, you're going to walk in them. This is your season of miracles. This is, I said, this is your season of of miracles, healings, automobiles, cars, businesses, jobs, positions. This is your season of miracles. This is your season of miracles. I want you to show, for those of you that are here, I want you to go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org, or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H, and I want you to show a $38 seed, $38 supernatural miracle seed, $38 supernatural miracle seed. I want you to watch what's about to happen within the next several months. God is about to do miracles for you. I said God's about to do miracles. Because now there's not one person here that can say you don't know what to do to walk into a miracle. Now you know that before I can walk in that I've got to activate it. How can I walk in something that I don't know how to activate? How do you activate it? Through your obedience, through doing what God tells you to do. Cash app is dollar sign Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. It's doing what God tells you to do. Well, you know, prophet, sometimes I feel it, but I don't know if it's God. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. God honors your desire to obey him. You know, prophet, sometimes I feel that it's God telling me this, but, but I'm not sure. Do it anyway. I would rather, and get this and hear this, get this and hear this. Here's what I mean. I would rather, Elder Veronica, I would rather attempt to hit God and miss God than not attempt to hit God and miss him altogether. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again just, just for the sake of clarity, just in case you missed it. I said, I would rather attempt to hit God and miss God than not attempt to hit God at all and miss him. 
Because even in my attempt to hit him and miss him, he honors that because I desired to obey. This, this is the season where, where even if I, if I feel like God is saying something, and, and I, may not, I may not be absolutely sure. I may not be absolutely sure. But God, I feel that, that this is what you're saying. And I've just, I've just, I've got, I've got a desire to obey you. I've got, I've got a yearning to obey you because I, I, I don't, I don't want to miss you because I've, I've spent too much time missing you. I've, I've, I've wasted time missing you when I just, I just don't want to miss you. I just don't want to know that. And this is you speaking to me, but yet I refuse to, to, to walk out on it because I don't know what's going to become of it. This is the season. Or even if I think it's God, or even if I feel like it's God, I've, I've, I've got to step out on it because I can't, I can't afford to, I can't afford not to step out. I can't afford to, to, to miss God because I, I didn't even attempt to hit him. I can't afford to miss him anymore because I didn't attempt to hit him. I've got to at least attempt because God honors my attempts. This is the season of divine and supernatural miracles. Activate the power. And watch the Holy Ghost. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I hope I've said something to bless you. For those of you that are just coming in, you didn't catch the totality of the scope. I need you to go back and catch the replay. But I'm out. If you got nothing else out of what I've said, know that this is your miracle season. Dr. Hawthorne, there's a new project. There's a new project. I hear the spirit of the Lord say, I'm talking to Dr. Dr. Carlene Hawthorne, the one and only. There she is. Dr. Hawthorne, there is a new project that you are about to take upon in this season. Thank you, Lawanda. I appreciate you. Love you much now. I'm talking to Dr. Hawthorne. There's a new project that I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that you are about to take upon in this season. And in this project, I hear the Lord say that he is favoring you. This, this is... This is not just something you want to do. This is not just a good idea. It's a God idea. Blessings to all of you. This is not just a good idea. It's a God idea. And uh, I hear the spirit of the Lord say that he's going to prosper this project uh, in this season. And I don't know why, but I feel like it has something to do with young people, something to do with teens. I don't know why, but I see, I see a bunch of young people in this room with you. I mean, the room is just, it's crowded. It's inundated, overflowed with just, with just young people. This project that God is going to give you to do, uh, it is going to bless young people around the world. It is going to bless young people everywhere and i hear the spirit of the lord say that he's going to he's going to give you he's going to give you the insight that you need and he's going to give you the connections that you need in order to bring uh this this program uh, uh into fruition it's different it's something on a level that nobody's doing god's going to bless it god is going to prosper it uh, i also hear the lord say he's doing something God just told me, he said, son, tell her I'm doing something new in her body. I'm doing, I don't know what's going on in your body, but God just told me to tell you 
that he's doing something new in your body where your health is concerned. He's doing something new in your body where where your health is concerned. I don't know what's going on with your body, but the Lord just whispered in my ear. He said, so tell her that I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new in her body, something new in her body. Uh, at Victoria Smalls, at Victoria Smalls, the Lord just spoke to me concerning you, and I have to get up out of here. God just spoke to me concerning you. I don't know what this is about, and I'm talking to Victoria Smalls. I don't know. I just saw your handle come up, and God began to minister to me concerning you. I don't know what this is about, but I see a missed opportunity. I see a missed opportunity, something that you should have capitalized on. I'm talking about something that happened in your past. Get this and hear this, but I see... I see a missed opportunity, something that you should have uh, capitalized on in your past, but you didn't because you were unsure about it. There was a missed opportunity that you should have capitalized on in your past, but you did not because you were unsure about it. The, did, did, does everybody see that? The woman of God responds by saying, true, sir. Did everybody, does everybody see that? I want you all to know that this is the Holy Ghost. This is not a guessing game. This is not manipulation. This is not foolishness nor stupidity. This is the Holy Ghost. The Lord told me to tell you that there was a missed opportunity. She responded by saying, true, sir. There was a missed opportunity in your past that you did not capitalize on because you were unsure about the opportunity. The Lord is saying to me that you will know the opportunity in which you missed uh, that you should have capitalized on, that you didn't capitalize on, because it will come back around within the next three months, full circle. There's my, there's my, there's my student. She says, "True prophet of God, Elder Baronica." I want you to follow that woman of God too. She's got a word in her mouth. Listen to me. She's one of my students. I know she's got a word in her mouth. Listen. The Lord said, "Within the span of three months." My God, I feel glory. The opportunity is coming around full circle. And this time, the Lord says, you shall capitalize on it and it shall be profitable to you. Uh, this opportunity, I don't know what this has to do with, but I hear the spirit of the Lord say that this opportunity is going to bring much needed and necessary exposure. There is somewhere that God is trying to get you to. The word of the Lord says that a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. There is a gift that God has given you that's about to make room for you and bring you before great people. I see, I see great people. I see great people. I see great people. There's a door that God's about to extend to you. There is a plat. I see kanda maroshaba ke. There is a door that God's about to open for you. I'm sorry, y'all. I felt something right there. There is a platform that God is about to extend to you that is going to bring you before kings and queens. I use the word kings and queens, and the word king and queen is not necessarily technical. It's not technical terminology. But I use the word king and queens because the people that God is about to bring you before are going to be very powerful people. I use the word kings and queens because they're going to be very uh, prestigious people. I use the word kings and king queens because they are going to be people of influence and people of affluence. They're going to be people of power and they're going to be people of wealth. God is about to bring you before powerful people. I see doors opening. I see platforms given. God's about to bring you before powerful people, powerful people. This one is, listen, I want you to get ready. Keep your phone lines clear. Because this one is going to call you and that one is going to call you and this one is going to call you and that one is going to call you and this one is going to call you and that one is going to call you. God is also going to birth through you a vision of at-risk youth. 
you have, for whatever the reason is, God has given you a heart for young people. I didn't even know I was going here, but I hear the Holy Ghost. He's given you a heart for young people. God has given you a heart for young people. He's given you a heart for young people. And there is a vision that God is going to birth through you, through at-risk youth. You will not have to use your own funding to bring this vision into fruition and into manifestation. The woman of God responds by saying, you are in my plans. The Holy Ghost is in your plans. Did everybody see that? I said, the woman of God responds by saying, prophet, you are in my plans. The Holy Ghost is only confirming through me what he's given to you and it shall come to pass. I hear the spirit of the Lord say that you will not use your own money for this, but God is going to touch the hearts of men. He's going to touch the hearts of women. And they are going to fund this program that God is giving you that will bring a blessing to young people everywhere. Everywhere. The Lord said to tell you, I feel glory now, that you will not. And I want you to hear this and get this. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again just because it sounds so way out there. I love to say stuff that sounds way out there that just God told me to tell you that you will not use your own money to fund this program. God's about to whisper into the ears of men. He's going to whisper into the ears of women and other men and other women are going to fund your program. I'm going to say it again, just in case the devil didn't hear it. Other men and other women are going to fund your program. I'm going to say it again, just in case hell didn't hear it. Other men and other women are going to fund your program. You will not, you will not, you will not, you will not, you will not. Somebody says, why does he keep repeating that? Because faith comes by hearing, not by having heard. See, you can't hear. See, sometimes you can't, you can't hear a thing one time and believe it. Because faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing, I-N-G, constantly and consistently. So I am constantly and consistently putting into her spirits. You will not fund your own program. You better open your mouth and say it. She says, I will not fund my own project. You better open your mouth and speak that over your own life. Other people will fund what God is about to do for you. The Lord also is telling me, uh, uh, Victoria, the Lord is also telling me to tell you that there's a trip that you are about to take. I see something on the calendar. I see something on the calendar. There's a trip that you are about to take that initially or from the surface doesn't seem like too much on the surface. Doesn't, it's a trip. I'm about to take a trip. I'm, yeah, I'm about to take a trip. On the surface, it doesn't seem like too much, but watch the connection that's going to be birth out of this trip. It's not just a trip. It's not just a trip. There's a connection that's going to be birth that's going to open up a new chapter in your life. There's a trip. There's a trip that you're about to take. That's not going to seem like anything from the surface. But I hear the Lord say that it's going to open up a new chapter in your life. I also see platforms 
I also see, Victoria, I want you to get this and hear this, but I, I see doors uh, being opening for you. I see platforms um, where, where young people are. I see you going into schools, ministering to young people. God's going, God's open. I just, I just, I see doors opening. I see doors opening. I see doors opening where you are going to schools and you are ministering to young people, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and even some colleges and universities. I just, I see these doors opening. And this platform being extended to you. And God is going to use you to minister to young people on every level. Because God has given you what they need. God has given you what they need. Is, is is she still here? She says, the prophet said, you spoke into my life two years ago is manifesting. I feel it so strongly. Oh my God. She says, I gave up prophecy two years ago. And the prophecy I spoke into her life two years ago, she said, is manifesting. Isn't God amazing? She says, I'm overwhelmed. This is it. Hallelujah. Isn't God amazing? I said, isn't, isn't God amazing? She said, what you said is being confirmed. Look at the Holy Ghost. Isn't God amazing? Isn't God amazing? Isn't God amazing? Hallelujah. 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 Somebody says you clearly walk with Elohim. Isn't God amazing? Hallelujah. Minister Purvis, love you, man. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Lyris, there is a meeting. I just saw Lyris. She's here. Hey, Rhonda, blessings to you. I appreciate you. Lyris, there is a meeting that, that's about to be set up with you. And I see someone of power. Um, Almost in the position of a governor of some sort. Some, I, when, as God gave me this prophecy, as God gave me this word, I heard the word governor. I don't know if the word governor was used to stick to technically speak in reference to a governor. Or the word governor was used to technically speak in relation to someone of great power. But 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 there's a meeting in the near future. I want you to write this down and jot this down because it's coming to pass. There is a meeting that's going to be set up between you and and I because I because I heard it I'm going to use it because I heard it I'm going to use it there's a meeting that's going to be set up between you and a governor somewhere I don't know how it's going to happen I don't know how it's going to happen somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who who knows somebody who knows somebody it's going to set this all up I don't even it's going to set this all up but at any rate, at any rate, something is coming out of this. And I want you to get this concerning a work 
that you desire to do. Something is coming out of this concerning a work that you desire to do. Somebody who knows somebody. Connections are important. Connections in life are important. You, you, you never know who God is connecting you to and why. I, I always say that every person that walks in your life is there for a reason in a season. It may not be permanent, but they're there for a reason in a season. But there, there is somebody, somebody that you are connected to that knows somebody that's going to kind of get this ball rolling. And listen, I know, I know that I'm talking in circles. I know I am. I know that I'm talking in circles and everybody's not going to get this. But I promise you when it happens... It's all going to come together. I said it's all going to come together. I know that I'm talking in circles, but when it happens, it's all going to come together and it's going to make sense. All right? It's going to make sense. 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 The Lord just told me to tell many of you to stop relying on psychics. I don't know who this is for, but I heard what I heard. Stop relying on your horoscope. Your horoscope is actually a heloscope. It's a word from hell. That ain't God. Oh, okay. All right. Y'all go. Okay. He told me to tell you, stop relying on psychics. For those of you who have been calling psychics, spending 39 and, and 59 cents a minute, Staying on your phone four and five hours. The Lord told me to tell you, stop it. I know who I'm, I know, I know you're here. I know you're here. I know you're here because God, you ain't got to confess it. You ain't got to say, God, forgive me. You, I know you're here because God says you're here. God don't lie. You do, but the Holy Ghost don't. The Lord says, stop relying on psychics. Stop relying on your horoscope. Your horoscope is a heloscope. That ain't the Holy Ghost. That ain't God. Because you're tapping into something. Horoscopes, psychics, you're tapping into something that God has nothing to do with. And if God don't have nothing to do with it, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. If God ain't in it, I don't want to be a part of it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, I said, if God's not in it, I don't want to be a part of it. If God doesn't have anything to do with it, I don't want nothing to do with it. Listen to me. You better leave that stuff alone. You, you, you about, you about to tap into something that you know not of. That's the occult. That ain't the Holy Ghost. It's not of God. You about, you about, listen, you about to tap into something that you don't want to tap into. Hallelujah. If God ain't in it, I ain't with it. I said, if God ain't in it, I ain't with it, y'all. Yeah. Listen. Listen, I'm out of here. Season of miracles. Where is, I just, where is this young lady? Who is she? Who is she? Listen, 
There is someone here by the name of Angela. Someone here by the name of Angela. Someone here by the name, me. Okay, there's me. Hey, me. <laughs> Someone here by the name of Angela. There is a gift. There's a gift that God has given you. And uh, you feel as though this gift has been put on a shelf. Because you've not gotten the, the proper recognition that you feel so deserving of. Doors have closed. Lights have been turned off. Opportunities have been hidden. This is the season where God's taking your gift off the shelf and bringing your gift before men so that you might get the proper exposure that's necessary. I see a pen and I see paper. I see pen and I see paper. I see pen and I see paper. God is about to, let me say this, I don't take this back. God is about to prosper the works of your hands. Did you all see her response? Look at her response. Look at her response. Somebody type what she just typed. Did, it, did you see her response? I said, I see pen and I see paper. I see pen and I see paper. How did she respond? She says, I write all the time. Listen to me. Y'all ain't ready for this. God is about to prosper. Yeah, I told her I see sin and I see, pa I see paper. I see pen and I see paper. She says, I write all the time. Listen to me. God is about to prosper the works of your hand. God's about to prosper the works of your hands. Angela, I want you to do something for me right where you are. I want you to lift up your hands to heaven. And I want you to say, God, thank you. Come on, repeat after me. There it is. Say, God, thank you for prospering the works of my hands. That is it. Say it again. Say, God, uh huh. thank you. There it is. For prospering the works of my hands. Come on, Angela, one more time. Say, God, thank you for prospering the works of my hands. Your hands are about to make money for you. Your, I said your hands are about to make money for you like you never imagined. God says this in the book of Deuteronomy. He says, I've given you power to do what? To get wealth. You know what the word power is translated in the book of Deuteronomy? The word power, watch this now, is translated ability. I've given you power to get wealth. I've given you ability to get wealth. Your ability is in your writing. Say it again. Say, God, thank you. Say it again. Say, God, thank you. I don't, say it through your tears. Say, God, thank you for prospering the works of my hands. The Lord told me to tell you that he has not forgotten about you. I should have been out of here like an hour ago. My God, the Lord said to tell you that he has not forgotten about you. 
Doors have been shut on you. Lights have been turned off on you. Opportunities not extended to you, but God told me to tell you that he has not forgotten about you. Angela, I decree and declare that this shall be a season of open doors for you. This shall be a season of open doors for you. And I want you to hear the words out of my mouth. I didn't say that this shall be the season of an open door, singular. But I said this shall be the season of open doors for you. I decree and declare that every disappointment is giving birth to a divine appointment where your life is concerned. Angela, did you hear that? I said every disappointment because you've had many. You've had many. You've had many. People don't know the pain that you've gone through because you have an ability to smile through it. But yet internally, you're dealing with so much. You know how to cover it up and you know how to camouflage it and you know, you know, you know how to work it, but you're dealing with and people just don't know the pain. Wow, she says, I felt forgotten. My mind passed. Don't tell me anything. Let the Holy Ghost speak. All right. Don't I don't like folk feeding me. I, I, I understand where you are. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. But this is God. This is God. I don't, I don't need folk, I don't like folk feeding me and telling me things about them and what they're going through because it might be something that God wants to say. All right, hallelujah. And we pray for you in the passing of your mom. I know that pain. My mom passed like five years ago, so I know, I know that pain. I know that pain. But the Lord strengthen you daily. The Lord strengthen you and I pray that God will give you peace that just surpasses all understanding. All right? But all is well. All is well. This is going to be the season of open doors for you. God, God, and God is going to, and I don't take this back, God is going to cause people to take notice of you. All right? The Lord, because this is your time, it's your turn. God is going to cause people to take notice of you. This is going to be a season of promotion for you. Watch what happens for you. And I don't take it back. I don't take it back. Listen, go to the website, www.profitmitchell.org. Or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show that $38 uh, 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 supernatural miracle seed. This is going to be a season of miracles. A season of miracles. For those of you that are just coming in, you need to go back and catch the beginning of the scope. Because when God gave me that word, he instructed me to teach people how to tap into miracles. We miss miracles because we don't know how to tap into them. We think it's my chill pill card season. You know, when God says that this is miracle season, many of us interpret that as a chill pill card season. All I do is sit back and do nothing and watch God do everything. No, you have got to activate the miracle working power of God before he releases the miracle working power of God. The miracle working power of God manifests through activation. Who activates it? You and I. I activate the miracle working power. You activate the miracle working power. For those of you that are just coming on the scope, you need to go back, play the scope from the beginning, listen to the whole scope in its entirety and in, in its totality, and God is going to minister to you and God is going to bless you. God's going to give you insight into stuff you've never had insight into before. This is your miracle season. This is your miracle season. Miracle season. Angela, there's also a past relationship that God is bringing healing from as well. I see 
a relationship out of your past, something out of your past, something that has happened, a relationship out of your past that God is going to give you mental and emotional healing uh, that you need. Relationship out of your past. I just saw that in the spirit. But God's going to give you healing mentally and he's going to give you healing uh, emotionally. But this is a new season for you and I want you to get that. If you've not received anything else I've said, I want you to get that and receive that. If you've not understood anything else I said, I want you to get that. This is a new time for you. And God's about to do some new things for you, all right? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Well, listen, good people, I'm out of here. I think I've been here for like two and a half hours. I'm out. I'm out. Blessings to everybody. All right. Blessings to everybody. This is a season of divine and supernatural miracles. But remember now, remember, it's a season of divine and supernatural miracles. There's my there's my periscope secretary. I was wondering where you were. I had a blessings to you. This is a season of divine and supernatural miracles. But remember now, you have to activate the miracle working power of God. All right, there's my Periscope secretary, Ida McQueen. You all know Ida? You have to act, she says, on her job. <laughs> you have to activate the miracle working power of God that he desires to release. Thank you, Rhonda. I appreciate it. Blessings to you. Well, listen, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Go to the website and I want you to sow that $38 supernatural uh, miracle seed for this season. $38. I want you to go to the website. It's www.prophetmitchell.org or you can go to my cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. Blessings to you, Minister Purvis. I love you, man. Love you, love you. Hey, Lyris, blessings to you. Listen, you all, Lyris has a book out there that I want you all to support. Lyris, can you give them the sight of where your book is? I want you all, listen, I have read that book and I'm telling you that book blesses me. Bless, doing well, doing very well. Thanks for asking. That book blesses me. I want you all to, uh, I want you all to subscribe and purchase that book, okay? It is going to bless your spirit. You got me? Where can they find the book at, Lyris? Before I go, can you put that up there real quick, if you would, please? Yeah, she wrote, she just she just recently released a book. As a matter of fact, the book that she released, I prophesied some time ago. There it is, Make the World Your Runway. You can click in her bio in order to find your in order to purchase the book. But it's called Make the World Your Runway. As a matter of fact, it was a book that I actually prophesied about uh some years ago. And amazingly so, guess what, you all? She mentioned me in the book. What an honor, huh? What an honor. That's actually the woman of God who won or who was uh, the first uh, black plus-size model to win Project Runway. Uh, for those of you who have ever watched Project Runway, her name is Lyris Cross. Uh, you can actually Google her and look her up. She's everywhere, worldwide known. Uh, but she was the first black uh, female, a uh, 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 plus size female. She says, you sure did prophesy it. Blessings to you. She was the first black plus size female to win uh, a project uh, runway. You can look her up and she's everywhere. She, season 16. Yep, that's the season she won. And she's a committed and consistent follower of mine. How honored am I? But I want you all to support the woman of God. She's just, just a great, great, great human being. And I just love her with all of my heart. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. But listen, I'm out of here. I am out of here. She won the model portion. Yep, she says yes. Won the model portion. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, I'm out of here. Blessings to everybody. And la di da -di. Enjoy your weekend. Love you all now. Bye-bye. Oh, blessings to you, Lyra. She says, the honor is on mine, prophet. You are a humble vessel. Blessings to you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Love you all.